Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Ongaku to You, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for the week of December 7th. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Luna. Hello, everyone. And if you heard me right, I said December 7th. This is technically our one year anniversary. So, happy anniversary. Yay! Oh, man, it's a... And if you guys did check out our feed probably right before this episode, you noticed that we have a very special episode up. Just uh, kind of be forewarned of my uh, little warning that I did for the episode. It was tough, but it was kind of necessary to kind of go through it. Besides that, how have you been, Luna? Busy. It's been a very busy, busy, busy week. I swear I've barely been at home at all this week. I feel like I've just been at work or going places after work and trying to get a lot of things done. So that's really it for me. And it'll be a busy weekend, too. So what about you, Ken? I've been okay. Just working. My boss finally came back. He was on vacation for two weeks. And he's telling me that I've been doing a good job. And I got my business cards. However... They misspelled my name. <laughs> so my my full name is a, is a little bit on the longer side. So a couple letters can get misplaced here and there. But it's quite funny that a Japanese company can't get a Japanese name correct. Yeah, I, I saw those. And uh, we'll have to swatch, swap business cards sometime. Even even though I, I don't know if either of us will go through each other's companies. But we should still swap business cards. It would be interesting because I would think that the Dallas office of my company would probably run through your type of business compared to where I'm located. (laughs) They probably do. My type of business, let's just say the department I work in, I don't work with a lot of the the public per se. I mean, I work with the public, but I work with a different type of public. So let's just say I work with more offices and their staff than actual members and, like, customers. So, for my type of department, I kind of, you know, I don't get too many calls, you know, with actual interaction with customers. (laughs) So, but I can think if your company does go through my company, I have a feeling I know which department they would probably be in. Would they probably call customer service or do another department? So, although, I don't know if I'd ever use your company to, to, to do anything. I don't know. I don't reside in Japan anymore, so... Yeah. I mean, probably the only reason you would use my company is to go to Japan, if that. I I could try, but where I live, I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere. Or not middle of nowhere. I live in a part of the U.S. that's hard to get to places. Mm. We don't have an international airport. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, I I know it's kind of hard for... For you, technically, it's really hard, so... Yeah, I mean, you can get to one in six hours. I can drive to one in six hours, or I can fly to one in two, but then, you know, it costs, it. it's a good amount to go from one to the next, which really sucks. So, that's the only bad thing about where I live. I mean, but it is cheaper than probably most places that have an international airport, so I guess I shouldn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, besides that, how have you been? Uh, eh, just listening to music and busy, that's it. <laughs> busy. 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 busy busy as a bee busy as a bee that's all i can say and it's gonna be like that throughout december yeah for us particularly it's gonna be really difficult for december not only are we doing a lot more episodes than i originally thought we would we will be doing another episode with with collaboration with Kuryu hunter our, our loving mailbox so stay tuned for that I think this month alone, we're doing like five or six episodes. Mm-hmm. We are, and it's a lot, especially for the holidays, too. So I'm kind of, I got holidays and birthdays, and I'm sure you do, too, you know, being the busy time of year. And plus, if, you know, when we have to work, a lot of people are on vacation, and you're trying to get a lot of things done, too. So just in general, at home and at work, but... Um, I think we got a lot of episodes. There will be a lot of fun episodes. I'm actually looking forward to a lot of them. There, There's going to be some cool ones. You guys are in for a good surprise this month. We got some really 
not, I guess you couldn't say they're surprising for being the type of month it is. They're just going to be exciting because it fits with this time of year. So I don't know. Can we announce any of them yet or should we keep it a surprise? Let's uh, announce our year end one. So if you guys don't know, it is the end of 2018 as the, it is December, so we are going to be doing a a fairly big episode for our top 10 songs released in 2018 and our new favorite artists of 2018. So there's a couple caveats with this. It's going to be songs released in 2018. It could be anything. It could be digitally. It could be physical. It could be a single or a album. It could even be on vinyl if you guys so happen to have that for you and Gray. But it has to be released in 2018. It can't be any YouTube videos to promote anything for 2019. And for our new favorite artist of 2018, it will just be an artist that we found, newly found in 2018. They could be anyone that started far back as 2008. But if we just found them and we like their sound and we still keep listening to them, that's a new experience for us to learn from this ever-growing industry, right? Yes, because there's several that I found that have been around for a little bit. But I didn't find them until 2018, and I was pleasantly surprised. So I'm really excited about the year-end episode. And just going over all our, our top tens, I think it'll be great, because we're all going to have a variety of songs that came out this year. I can tell you that. There's going to be a huge variety. And besides just having a big blowout episode for 2018, we'll also be making a huge article for 2018 including all of us and our new writer. He doesn't want to appear on the podcast yet, so that's the only reason why he's not going to be involved with that part. But he's going to have a big part of the writing staff part of it. And if I can finagle our our editor out, I'll ask her to choose a song that she likes. It'll be interesting. I'm Mm -hmm. looking forward to hearing your guys' mostly your main reasons why you like the song or the artist. So... That's something that I'm looking forward to very, very much. And it'd be very interesting to hear what Gray has to say. (laughs) Because this is his first, I guess, major experience. I don't don't want to put words in his mouth, but it seems like it's his first more ocean exposure, so to speak, to Mm -hmm. the world of J-pop. Yes, especially as there's so many artists out there. And I feel like Gray's discovering new artists. You know, each time we check the Oricon or just in general, I feel like he, he's enjoying discovering new ones. So I'm excited to hear what he has to say and all the new artists he discovered and the reasons why he really likes them. So, And it, it's funny because I could just technically pull any of the indie people off because they are new bands that I've discovered or new artists that we've discovered mm-hmm. throughout the year. I so agree with that. And are we just doing one new artist or are we going to do a top 10 of like new artists we discovered this year? I think we should limit it down to one because if we do a top 10 of artists and songs, I think that's running a risk of a four hour yeah, episode. What about a, cause there's more than one new artist I discovered this year, to be honest. What if we did a top three? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do a top three. I know Gray is listening. So I we don't need to put it in our private chat there. Top three of new favorite artists for 2018. I'm pretty sure a lot of it is just going to be the indie artists for me because I just love, 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 love a lot of these new artists that I just found this past year. Mm-hmm. And one we're going to be talking about very shortly for Indie Corner. But besides that, let's move on to what we've been listening to. Let's start with you, Luna. Um. So... Mine is really random because I had my iPod on shuffle this week in my car. Usually I have a CD I listen to, and the CD I was listening to was a Christmas CD. A actually Korean Christmas CD. It was in all English, but it was a Korean duo called As One, who I, I think they're still together. But I was listening to that, and I got not bored of it. I just, I can't, I can only listen to so much Christmas music. I worked in retail for years. <laughs> I, you can guess how that is in Christmas time is Black Friday and on it's in Christmas music and you want to blow your brains out hearing the same song over in different versions of it and half the singer singing it you hate so 
I switched it up and I just put my iPod in and because I'm driving, I can't pick what I want. It's dangerous. Put it on shuffle. So mine has been tons of random stuff. I'm just going to name off some of the artists that really popped into my mind when they came up on my player. I was like, oh my God, I forgot how much I love them or I forgot how much I love this song. It's so good. So one was Mo Moon and... I, I love Mo Moon. I love their voices. I love Yuka's voice. So amazing. So Tiny Star popped up. And Do You Remember? I love Do You Remember. And as soon as I heard that pop up, I'm like, oh, I'm melting. It's such a good song, but not a winter song. Another one popped up was Stephanie, who she doesn't, I don't think she does anything anymore. She did two anime songs. Song at popped up was Friends, which was used in Gundam Double Zero. And what else popped up on my iPod? Kotokumi's Iwo Tomonaide, aka Love Never Stops. I think that would be the translation. The strings version of that came up and it's so good. I was singing along with it in a car. Such a beautiful song. I love it. And Hamasaki Yumi actually popped up, who I've been listening to a ton lately because the last S last album I listened to is Rock and Roll Circus. Then I was watching a whole bunch of her videos. And Otsuka Ai popped up with Momo no Hanabira. And Jamoza popped up with her song Sky. And Jongri popped up. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell where my iPod is random. Not along with American stuff. So I got a funny thing that happened the other day. This happened yesterday. And since it was on shuffle, I had this I love the song by Katomelia and, and Shota Shimizu. They do a song together called Love Forever. They actually do a ton of songs together. They have a whole album of them doing songs together. But this one popped up and it's like a really upbeat, up tempo love song. And I sing to it whenever I hear it. I know all the lyrics. Well, I'm all happy and singing to it. And then it ends and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to have another song like this. And I'm really excited. <laughs> the thing it pops up is Disturbed, Stupefy. <laughs> and you can just imagine my expression went from all this, you know, cutesy, you know, happy singing to me headbanging in the car. And I do have a soft spot for, I do like some metal music and it's something most people won't guess about me. I have some random stuff on my iPod. You'd be like, what the hell, you know? So when Disturb popped up, I immediately started singing Stupefy because I love that song. And I went back to Love Forever and then I did, and then I went back to Stupefy I'm like, that is the weirdest combination, and just my expressions changing. It was priceless. I, I, I just, I had to share that on here, because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I would pay money to say <laughs> I I should have went back and recorded it, but I don't have enough space on my cell phone. It was funny, though. I Maybe I'll do a playlist of those together and just have my expression of doing that, but it was an interesting combination. So a lot of random, that random stuff popped up and I like doing this with my iPod because I'll get artists or songs they haven't heard for a while, like Tiara, a song from her Emotions album popped up and I'm trying to think of some other ones that I kind of, I wouldn't say forgot about, but ones I don't listen to often, like Double popped up on my iPod and I haven't listened to Double in forever and I I, I, I have all her albums and I kind of forget, but her Spring Love song popped up a little too soon for Spring. But it reminded me, you know, this is such a good song, and I love her and miss her. I don't think she'll come back, but... So, a lot of random. A lot of randomness this week. What about you, Ken? But I guess for me, I've been listening to a bunch of random things. I picked up She's Is Summer, and she's a female vocalist. And it's very interesting, I guess, because I'm kind of the opposite of you, Luna, with your male vocalist that you mm -hmm. are very, very particular about them. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly particular about my female vocalist, specifically if they're a solo act. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're doing the pop and R&B stuff, it's kind of, I have to like be kind of harsh or particular about what I want to listen to. And originally, I only liked one or two songs from her. And then it just grew to three then four, then five, and then I end up listening to her entire albums. So <laughs> I would definitely check it out. Her song, Aini Ikanakchao, 
is very very good and it's a very interesting style from what her other songs are like call me in your summer is a very different style from i need ikanak chow so it's very interesting i very like her and i'm pretty sure you would kind of like her also luna i'll have to check her out then Besides that, I've been listening to Ghost Like Girlfriend also. I've been listening to a lot of our indie corner stuff, so like the She's Gone. I also was listening to Narkaitaki because their new album just came out. I bought it digitally, so I'm just loving it right now. It's so good. I love it, love it, love it. With the premiere of their new album, they also dropped a new music video. I forgot to make a total article about that, but it's just we've been just so busy. It's been difficult. Besides Narc Kaitaki, I also been listening to Polka Dot Stingray. They just dropped a new music video also, so I can't wait till their new full album, not just mini album. They had a mini album. I want to say right around the time I went to Japan, like a little bit before that in June, they dropped a mini album. They're going to be dropping a full album fairly shortly, I hope so, because it seems like that's what this is leading up to. Besides that, not much, like just about five or six artists, just randomly in and out there. But yeah, with that, let's move on to the news here. And we only have a couple of news. It's been, like I said, it's been kind of busy for us, so we haven't been really able to keep track, so to speak, of what's been new with the news. But let's start with this. iZone announced that they will be making their first Japanese debut. And it'll be set to be on February 9th. This is the group that was formed in South Korean's reality competition zone, Produce 48. And three out of the 12 members are actually part of the 48 family from HKT and AKB48. This announcement comes from them performing live in Japan from the FNS Music Festival, which is a pretty big music festival if you're like... Well, they're pretty big overall, but... There was they're... a lot of people who were there weren't idols, like Kodokumi. Uh, there's a picture of Kodokumi, Miwa, and... Mm. Oh my god, I just saw that on Instagram. Uh, I was so surprised when I saw them all together, that I thought they were adorable. <laughs> and oh yeah, I, it's the one you tagged me in, right? I tagged you in, yeah. I was so shocked to see it, and I follow a lot of the... On our Instagram, I follow a lot of the celebrities, but when I saw them all there, I was... Oh, it was uh, Lisa, Miwa, and Kodokumi all together. And seeing those three together is such an odd combination. But then when I saw it was at, it's an FNS photo, I thought, oh, that makes sense. That's a really big music festival. And I know Kodokumi performs at it almost every year. So, but seeing I have a all question. Yeah. Which Lisa are we talking about? Because we know so many Lisas now. <laughs> um, Lisa of Fate Zero, who does the anime music. Oh, uh, okay. Anime Lisa. Lisa. The, yeah, the capital L, the little I, the capital S, the capital A. Yes. Not M flow of Lisa. But no, I'm pretty sure she Lisa. was there too. <laughs> she probably was, and not Lisa Yamaguchi. We were. <laughs> it was funny. So, going back on our topic for the end of the year artists. Gray was saying, ah, oh, I bet you'll never guess. Mine is pretty easy because it starts with an L, and we were just trolling him very, very hard with mm-hmm. just all these other artists that began with L. We were, like, saying Lady Baby and Little Gleam Monsters and Lisa. Yep. We, we all know it's going to be LOL, but we were just trolling him pretty hard yes. about that because he was being so round about it. <laughs> but, yeah. This, they'll be matched by AKS, which is AKB48's major, major label for the most part. And we'll be releasing music through Universal. So it's, it's interesting that they'll be doing something like this. So it, I guess it's good from whatever came out of Produce48. I'm, I haven't watched it personally, so I wouldn't know all too much about it. But it is interesting. Oh yeah, it is. It's very interesting. I'm really curious to see how they'll they'll do. I'm pretty sure they won't be pulling AKB numbers or any of the 48 numbers, but it's it's interesting to see nonetheless. Mm-hmm. And I guess one more other news. I, it technically kind of passed by the time this is up, but 
it's interesting that this happened. So if you guys have noticed on our site, we released an article that AKB, not AKB, uh -huh, another A artist, Asian Kung Fu Generation announced a 48-hour free trial listen of their new upcoming album, Home Hometown. So as long, they made a special website that was only available for 48 hours, and you can listen to the entire album in its entirety before it was released this past week. So, And it was arranged that it could only be made through a smartphone, so you couldn't digitally rip it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting that Asian Kung Fu Generation did this. I mean, they could be kind of st stick in the muds about how they release their music, but I'm quite happy that they have the goals to do such a thing like that. Because you look at all these other artists, they want to, they want to make that much money as much as they can. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't want to risk something like this. So I'm very, very happy that they did. I am too, because it shows they really do care about their fans. And they also want them to get a sneak peek at that new album too. And it also give more people a chance to listen to it and really want to buy it. You know, getting it's not just to try before you buy, but even if a lot of people are going to buy it, they still want to get that sneak peek. Oh, yeah. Compared to, like, you know, the 30 seconds that you would get from the Oricon website or, or Amazon, it's exactly. good that, you know, you're able to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And it's another interesting thing that they did is they added a, a GPS tracking to the website for mm -hmm. people who are listening so you had to be on the move you couldn't be just in one place listening to the album <laughs> oh and see me i like to listen to stuff at work occasionally so mm. occasionally you know like when i'm doing something that's very tedious music helps me get through it oh so yeah i would just be sitting at my desk with my headphones on listening to it so i probably wouldn't count but it would be good to exercise too especially if you're running in that or walking around, oh, yeah. you know, going place to place. That's a great idea. So I'm just, I'm just interested in the idea that more like artists should do these kind of things because it actually shows that the artists do care about the fans. And you mm -hmm. know, there are like other bands that do this. Case in point, our our indie corner band Inc. They mm -hmm. dropped an EP for free because they really wanted to get their name out at the time. So. It's interesting that when a bigger band, a major label band, a, a well-known band such as a Asian Kung Fu Generation mm -hmm. would do such a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a, I know this isn't a Japanese band, but years ago when I saw Three Days Grace Live, they, they actually said, go on our website, download our music for free. They're like, we don't care if you actually purchase it. We have enough money from sales. They're like, I want the fans to enjoy the music. And if you can't afford to buy our CDs, go ahead and download it. Because we want we want to get our music across to all our fans. Even if you can't afford it right now, I know eventually you'll go back and buy it when you have the money. So I thought that was a really neat thing to do. And they announced that at their live because they were dropping a new album not too long after. And I never forgot that because they really cared about their fans. And, you know, how many bands actually do that, especially in the U.S.? They're so big on piracy and copyright here. You know, you're not even supposed to be sharing CDs with friends. But it was, it was shows, you know, bands like that care about their fans. And like Asian Kung Fu Generation did, it's a great gesture, especially this time of year. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's, it's pretty cool that, you know, the label was able to do that for them. We'll get back to their label fairly shortly <laughs> on some bad news about that. But I'm very happy that Kion, which is a subdivision of Sony Music, was pretty cool for them to at least let them do that. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Sony Music, if you guys buy your songs digitally through Sony Music... Be aware of it being randomly taken down. And, you know, Gray unfortunately went through this because Sony Music Japan took down any remnants of Scandal pretty much on Apple Music and possibly Spotify. I haven't really checked on Spotify yet, but they took down every little thing of Scandal. You can't even see them. Their Scandal Apple Music 
essentials are basically four songs which Scandal had helped with not really being a part, a part of. So just kind of be aware that, that Sony might be starting to do that, which is, it's kind of bad because, you know, if you bought the song, you should be entitled to own it, but that runs the risk of what it means to own the song digitally, yeah. And physically, you know, and you can get your money back from iTunes if that does happen. I mean, just call iTunes or go up to your Apple store and you can get refunded. But that's not the point, too. I mean, there are a lot of people who can't, who don't have the means to physically buy Scandal's albums. The import fees, getting it over here, depending on the edition you want. It, it's, it can be a expensive process. I do feel like purchasing it digitally on US iTunes is way cheaper than buying it physically, especially if you bought it new, you're paying 30 to $38, not including shipping. So, you know, yeah. it's understandable as well, but I am i don't know how it works if you downloaded it and it's on your computer, you should be safe, but I don't download, I don't do digital music. I All the CDs I have are physical copies. There's only a few things that I have done digitally. If it's a digital single only, then I will go ahead and buy it. I've done that with several artists when they've only released digital singles. For the most part, like mine are like my scandal copies are physical, so I don't have to worry about that. But for you guys who don't might not have the means to import something like that, just just be careful and make sure you have a backup if you did buy it and put it on your computer, put it on an external too, just in case. Yeah. And it's it's sad that it had to come to this, but you know, Sony is Sony is kind of just being Sony things. And can I say I'm not surprised? Yeah. I, I'm really not. It's it's so weird, but it in a way, it is it is what it is kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't agree and with you know, it, but it's, it's how they perceive the market, I'm thinking. And they could have a different perspective than we do, so. Yeah, when I buy my music digitally, I have, I, I have a Japanese account, so... It kind of helps that way of what I'm doing, how I get around that system. But yeah, for people who want to support the artists with an American account, it's literally up to whatever the label says. Even if you spent the money, that's it's kind of similarly to video games for that matter. I guess music is still a fairly new genre. So is so is video games towards the digital market. But it shows that you know a label or a developer could giveth and taketh away just as easy, right? Mm-hmm. It's true. It is what it is. We we can't really say much more without, you know, intentionally bashing Sony and we kinda that is a dick move, but we kinda don't wanna intentionally go after Sony about that because it's just that's not our thing. We don't as much as I love being on Pottersaurus, this is another thing too. Kyo really intentionally goes after Atlas, which is another big gaming company. And they do kind of crummy things, but, you know, he intentionally goes after them occasionally, and it's kind of funny to watch. I just, I don't know, I don't feel that strongly towards a label that if something like that happens, that I'm going to be, like, vindictive, so to speak. Oh, yeah, I'm still going to support them and buy all the artists I care about, because it's not like I'm supporting the artist, not just the label, yeah. I'm not going to boycott them for that. I don't agree with what they do. And yes, I've probably come off as snippety towards Sony in the past, which isn't surprising. I, I don't agree with their international marketing. But as a company in general, they have some great artists that I love. They do have great physical releases. I love their physical releases. And that's the one thing I'm glad I can get them imported. Because there are some companies you can't import, and going through third-party drop shippers is expensive. But yeah, Sony at, at least at, lets you import it, and you can get the CDs. Yeah, at least we can do that. They could be total dicks and just say, no, we're not going to import anything out. Mm -hmm, or export it, yeah, and they could do that yeah. easily. But they, they, they do have a decent international market base, so... I feel like maybe they just want more people to buy the physical copies because they want to try to stay with physical then go digital. That could be yeah. the case of why they're doing this, which does make sense because if you see we're coming into a digital age and Japan is really big on physical media, 
Whereas yeah. the rest of the world starting to get away from it, especially in the U.S. I myself love physical media, but at the same time, I it takes up space, it gets cluttered, so I do understand that. And I understand digital is easier, but the other things with digitally I've seen is things like what, what happened with Scandal, they're gone. Once the company decides to take it down, it's gone. I've known people who bought their movies digitally, and they went to watch it again, and blah, 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 took it down. And you can't watch it. And I'm not going to name the company. It's a company I, I have a love or hate relationship with. And it's not Sony. It's a different one. But it, it can happen. And then your digital file's gone. Even if you purchased it, you know, if you bought it. Or if it came with a movie, you know, you bought and it had the digital copy. I mean, it, it can go away so fast. Your computer crashes. You can lose everything. So I see so many issues with digital versus physical but I understand the ups and downs of both. I can also see Sony. They're trying to... I really feel like they want to keep physical media alive. I I think in a way they're trying... That's maybe why they took it down and maybe want more imports to go out. So they want... They want more people to buy it. Yeah. I, I don't know. That could be something too. I really don't know though. I... I don't work over there. I can't tell you their marketing strategy. Marketing wasn't my strong suit. So... It's it's just just keep an eye out. Lisa looks like she's still up though. She, um, and it, the good thing is, if any of these artists are on Vivo, you can watch them on YouTube, for example, because Lisa's up there and Nakagawa Shoko's up there. So I'm not sure how they're looking on iTunes. So, but yeah, it it, it kind of is what it is, and just be aware of that that you know, a, a developer or a a label could give it and easily take it away. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of how it is in the digital market now, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. We can't, if you're going to play the digital ball, you kind of got to understand that. And I understand you paid money for this, but it, it kind of is what it is at this point. But yeah, let's move on from that very depressing topic to um, our indie corner. And it's very interesting how to say this name. <laughs> I can't say it correctly. I tried. Their katakana is kurakuraksu, and it's spelled C R C K slash L C K S. Kurakuraksu. But you know, it, they're they're very interesting. They are a a five member, I guess, jazz pop band kind of really don't know what to kind of genreize them as but i guess that's the closest i guess i could take them from that formed in 2015 they have a very very interesting take on various genres such as jazz math and progressive rock and they mix their own unique composition with each song that gives it its own identity within that genre that they tackle they're also a very technically sound band, mostly because two of the members actually studied music theory in school. They actually met in America through music theory, theory school abroad, so I'm wondering what kind of schooling they went to for that. Me too. That got me really curious. So they also have a very interesting sense of artistry and an emotion that, you know, usual bands of that nature kind of lose along the way. And they have a very acute musical appropriateness, which is going along with music theory. If you know how music works, for the most part, you also know how music thinks. And that's a major thing of music theory anyway. But they have a very high sense of musical appropriateness where they have various amounts of electronica because they have a synthesizer that goes with a certain amount of their songs. While other bands might overuse this theme of, you know, electronica, you know, Cracklax, they perfectly time when and where to input that electronica feel with their songs, which is very, very refreshing, which I love about this band. So I, and and I, I, I agree with you on that. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, go right ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I agree with you. And you can really hear that, that sense of music style, especially if you listen to several different songs 
I feel like they were all unique in their own right. Like, No Goodbye was more of a... You could hear all the instruments in it. You could hear, like, some of the synthesizers. You could hear the drums. You could all hear that with her vocals. And it was more of a mellow song, I felt like. Whereas Mado was more... It had a completely different style. It was more upbeat and jazzy. Yeah. So it was amazing hearing the same group do these two different styles and do them so well and match with the vocals, how each instrument comes in, how that all blends together. I, I, I just thought it was, I really liked hearing how each song had this very unique sound to it, at least, you know, music video wise. So. Currently, they only have three music, or th- not three music, they have three mini albums currently available. They're all on Apple Music and Spotify, so go check them out. And they actually, I kind of bent the rules just a little bit because by the time I made this article, I just found out that they just became major. And it's interesting because you go look at Apple Music, their stuff still has their old indie label, but the release of their CD is with their major label. So I thought that was very, very interesting. But yeah. Go check them out on our site. Their song, No Goodbye, is on our site. And it's amazing. I love that song to death. I could listen to that song and Mado, which we were talking about, all day. And it's so, so good. But yeah. Moving on, let's go to the Oricon. And the Oricon, I don't know. This was interesting. Yeah, it was an interesting week. I really don't know how much I can say about it. It was definitely something. You know, and this is coming from, we're going to spoil the the first one right away because we already knew that this was going to come from last week. So AKB took number one. Mm-hmm. However, I would fight that number four is a much more better song than AKB. I agree I'm with you on that one because we'll talk about it, but Ken already knows my feelings on on the number one song. Yeah, we'll we'll go into depth about that, so don't worry. So let's start with number 10, and it is Sawano Hiroyuki NZK with his song, Narrative and Noise of Rain. And for those who don't know, Sawano Hiroyuki, he's a composer, so he doesn't technically sing all that much, so he invites other artists to come sing the songs with him. Or for him, I guess. And the song Narrative was sung by Lisa. While Noise of Rain had, I believe, a, a guy. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure <laughs> who it was. <laughs> but he had two different vocalists for for this song. And it's, it's very interesting. Narrative was a very anime song because it is Lisa that we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. I actually really, I did like narrative. I thought it was a good song. Um, it was very Lisa. Yeah. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was Nishikawa Takanori that sung the other song, the guy from TM revolution. It, yep. It was. And I really do like Nishikawa Takanori, but I actually did not care for the song. Yep. I don't know what it is about Sound of Rain that just turned me off. Noise of Rain. Uh, noise <laughs> of Rain. That that tells you how much I cared about the song. It turned me off so much that I, I felt like a narrative was a much more interesting song, even though it was just strictly just anime. Yeah, I, I felt like it definitely had something more, to be honest, than Noise of Rain. So it, it was more memorable than Noise of Rain. Yeah, and that's not to talk and to knock you know nishikawa it's he's a phenomenal artist in his own right he's very he's been a major pillar for the for the male vocalist side for a lot of the japanese industry so you know there's no knock on him but it's i guess him being paired with this particular type of song it didn't fit his style so to speak yeah that's what i felt like too and i really do like uh I do like his stuff. Like I have a lot of his albums, but this song just wasn't something that I cared for. But yeah, it sold a lovely 
9,958 copies. And moving on up, it is The Idol Master Theater Boost 3 Last Actress. I believe that's what the katakana would say. Yeah. Yep. Akutoresto. Yep. <sighs> it was much better than the last Idol Master song last week, but. I don't know. I did like this one way better than last week. It definitely wasn't my favorite of the Idolmaster songs, but mm. it wasn't bad. I enjoyed this one a little, way more, like 20 times better than last oh, week. Oh, yeah. This one did have some catchy songs, like the main song on it. it. So if you watch the YouTube clip, it'll go through each of the songs on that, that single. And I love the first song. The second song was okay. Uh, so I felt like it depended on which song was in that single. Yeah. I, and it, it's funny. It's funny because Idolmaster had a very, very big like fan event this past week. It wasn't this weekend, but it was last week. I, I, I guess I should preference that. And a lot of the very famous seiyus or voice actresses that were from Bang Dream were also participated in this event because they're they're see you so of course they can't just bank on one job they have to do all these other jobs and for the most part bang dream took a lot of idol master seiyus and love live seiyus and milky home seiyus from this and amalgamation into bang dream so it's very interesting to see how their different i guess singing styles mm -hmm. compare to the character that they sing in like Bang Dream because there's two characters particularly that was part of Idol Master that sing very differently on Bang Dream and it's just it's something that I've noticed when I've been listening to Idol Master for like the past month now it's it's, it's very interesting to see how their singing style changed so to speak but yeah last actress sold a lovely 14,182 copies and going on up, once again, it is Nogizaka46 with Kaidi Michiwa Tomawari Shitaku Naru. I finally got it correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing more we can really say about this song. It's still a very good song, though. I've listened to it again, and it's honestly, it, it deserves a higher spot than the AKP song. <laughs> yeah, this was but a that's good just song. me. This, this was a good song. And the music video was a much more contained music video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more on that later, but there's nothing much we can say about this, we, what we haven't seen already. And Nogizaka sold a lovely 18,873 copies this week. And going on up to number 7, it is Blue Moon by Nakagawa Shoko. Or Shokotan. We haven't seen her in a very long time. I'm very surprised that she's still doing music we haven't. i haven't seen her on this year it's been since 2015 since her last single and 2014 since her last albums jeez <laughs> yeah. It, yeah it's been a while so it, it's you know seeing her back is great because i love shokotan and i'm i'm super super glad to see her back to be honest I really like the music video for this song. I do though. too. It was really good, and I really enjoyed this song. I, I, I'm just happy to see her back. To be honest, so I think it's a good comeback song. I mean, it, it, it it's a very, I guess you could say, a mellow type song. But she does a really yeah. good job, and she looks great in the video too. Yeah, she does. But yeah, moving. It sold a lovely nineteen thousand. 183 copies moving on up i was wondering when he was gonna pop up again since he popped up for the kohaku it is sugawa kiyoshi with shobu no hanamichi yes i was wondering when he was gonna show up too because i remember when this was on there yeah it's been like what maybe a month or two mm -hmm. yeah i, I want to say like a month or two since uh up. And it's it's random too because he didn't pop up beforehand. He popped up like once in in February, and then he's been popping up like almost every couple weeks for like the past two to three months. It's just recently that this happened. Well, maybe with the Kohaku coming up, a lot of people are purchasing this again. You know, it's, I I guess it, so. He's gonna be part of the Kohaku, isn't he? If I'm correct, he is. 
Yes. So yes, I he think, is. And I'm pretty sure he's going to sing the song. Yeah, um, I bet that's the reason everyone's getting back in the groove and purchasing it who didn't purchase it before. I mean, we, we've talked about it before, and it's a really good song. It's an Inca song, so if you guys don't know what we've been talking about, he's a very prolific Inca singer, and it's it's all right. It's Inca. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't knock it for that. If you guys really like Inca or if you want to hear what Inca sounds like, you should listen for, for it for Shobu no Hanamichi. It's a really good mm -hmm. song. But yeah, this week it sold a lovely 19,752 copies. And going on up to number five, it is I Want to Grow and Kisho Ten Ketsu Jahyaku by Junjo no Afria. Afria? Af Af Afria? That's what I would say. <laughs> Junjo no Af Afu Af uh, Aferia. Aferia? 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 Yeah. I hate katakana. Because you could say it different ways. Yeah, you could say it different ways. This is a interesting thing. <laughs> I, I personally, I don't know. It's it stands out long enough to be generic, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stand out enough to be memorable. Yep. And that's pretty much all I can say about it. Like. Just watching the first couple scenes of this music video, I really thought that it was going to be, oh my god, it's going to be like the same music video we watched last week where I just wanted to shoot my head mm -hmm. out. And it it surprised me. I mean, the, the, the singing style was a little bit more mellow, but it's there's nothing really memorable for me to keep up with, so to speak. Yeah. Yep, I, I agree. It It is what it is. And, you know, it it sold fairly well. It sold a lovely twenty one thousand seven hundred and eighty three copies. But you know, I'm probably gonna forget about this next week. Yeah, that's my issue with it. Like I'm like, oh, this isn't a bad song, but it was just super forgettable. That was my issue with it. I feel like that with a with certain idol songs. I feel like it's like you said, call it by the numbers. It really starts to feel like that after a while. And you know, it's not a knock on the song. It's really good, but it's just like it's. It stood out enough to not be generic, but it didn't stand out enough to be memorable. It was like a half. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind that, personally. I mean, you you got on the organ, and that's really all that matters for, for labels, for the most part. But it is what it is. And moving on up to number four. It is Sunnily and Red Soul Blue Dragon by... Atsushi from Exile and Red Diamond Dogs. And by God, this song. I agree with you. You want me to go first or do you want uh, to go first about this song? How about you go first this time? Okay. This song shows Atsushi's amazing range for songs and his acute talent for songs and music theory and, and composition in general. Because... His song Suddenly is a very, very, very good melody song. A very good ballad song. Very nice, slow, sweet to the point. Gets that Jimmy's up for the winter time. Kind of slow song that you kind of want to hear during this time. That isn't a holiday song. <laughs> Yet, he switches on a dime when he's with the Red Diamond Dogs. To this more R&B pop feeling. And just in your face like raw emotion with that song and red diamond dogs had an all-star cast anything that if you were like a fairly big name r&b person within avex you were most likely in this song because dober infinity was also in the song mm -hmm. and they became kind of our breakout hit so to speak for the both of us because we both randomly started liking them since that album that we did with kyo mm -hmm. and it's so good. I Originally, I was like, oh, man, nothing can beat Red Soul Blue Dragon because it was so good. And then suddenly just knocked me off my feet because that ballad was so good. So good. So I'll step in. I, I completely agree. Um, uh, Exile Atsushi. 
he never ceases to amaze me in his ballads, but this one in particular really, really caught my ears. It was gorgeous. His vocals in it were amazing. The music video is on YouTube, by the way, and it's a really good video, but this song, I actually listened to it twice. I went around and listened to the first time, and then I listened to... Uh, Red Soul Blue Dragon, which I freaking loved. Oh my god. I loved Overman Infinity. And I also really like Jade, who's featured in the song. He has such a great vocal ability. And when I heard his voice come in, my heart just started to melt. I'm like, oh, I need to get more of his albums. Amazing. This whole song was, it just blew me away. It was catchy, it was great. And then again, then after I listened to the rest of the Oricon, which we'll talk about soon, I went back and re-listened to Suddenly again. Because it was so good. I'm just like, I love this. It, it, it just has this great mellow beat, his harmonious vocals. I mean, you really hear him come out in this song. And I, I, I just, I adored it. This was like, this was the best single this week. This beats out every other one that came out this week for me. I cannot say enough about both these songs, and I really enjoyed the video for Red Soul Blue Dragon as well. Seeing everyone collaborate made it really good, and it shows the amazing collaborations they can do. Yeah, definitely. And you know, Atsushi is an amazing songwriter to begin with anyway, because you know that he did that Japanese version of Just the Way You yep. Are, and I love that song, and I particularly, I mean... I don't hate the English version of the song because Bruno Mars is, he's he's an amazing mm-hmm. artist. But, you know, something that was different from the Japanese version, which gave a very, very refreshing take on the on the song itself. And it made it feel like its own song compared to it just being a cover. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that song he did was amazing in general. And I remembered him singing that. And I thought he knocked it out of the park. So... I'm just sad that it went up against AKB because I'm I'm pretty sure if this was by itself, this would have been number I, one. I I agree. I completely agree. Like AKB was probably the only big challenge. Besides that, it probably would have won. I I think so too because this was an amazing freaking single. I loved it so much. Although it did have some competition with the next. Yeah, and it's interesting. With the next one, because let me let me wrap up on the Atsushi yes. sales number before we move on to number three here. Suddenly and Red Soul Blue Dragon sold a lovely 27,360 copies. Now, continuing on to number three, it is One More Time by Super Junior. And this is a group that I haven't heard in a long time. Long time. And it's interesting to see that they came back. Well, I... For the most part, they were mostly on hiatus because of all the members going to, to be part of the military, right? Yes, they were. They went on hiatus for a long time, actually, because most of them did go into the military. I think most of them have come back already. They're originally 13, and I think now there's maybe nine, eight yeah, or nine. Yeah, looks like that. So I'm kind of surprised to see them on here. I haven't paid attention to K-pop like I used to. But back in the day, I was a, I love Super Junior song, Sorry, Sorry. That's still one of my favorite dance songs. I, I love it. And so he, hearing them come back is actually kind of neat. And I forgot they dipped their hand in the Japanese industry, too, because it's been a while since we've seen them. Oh, yeah. it's It's been a hot minute since we've seen them. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. And it's refreshing to see them, too, because they were... You talk about kind of an older J-pop or uh, K-pop artist. If I know them personally, like if I was a fan of them, then they're kind of old because, I mean, I loved them when I was in getting out of high school into college, and that was a while ago. Yeah, they now they debuted in '05 in Korea. Yeah. So. So. They've been around for a while, and I consider them one of the older groups as well. They're not as old as, like, Xinhua, um, but they're one of the ones I also remember, because Sorry Sorry was their third album. <laughs> that was a good song. Mm-hmm, still my favorite. 
but I, I'm inclined for the the Chinese their Chinese group with uh, Supergirl. Oh my god, that was my favorite song. Now now you're making me want to listen to them. Now. <laughs> but yeah, one more time by Super Junior sold a lovely. Forty-five thousand one hundred and forty-nine copies. Um, what did we really think? Did you watch the Korean video for the song? I did watch the Korean video so- version of the song. Honestly, it was all right. It was a little weird. I... It was it was a re- it was a different style than a lot of K-pop, which is kind of why I liked what they did with it. Yeah, that's probably the only reason why I kind of like it now because modern K-pop now, it's so americanized and it's so i don't want to say manufactured it feels like that in certain artists because it, they're popping out so but many it feels like right. that yeah yeah and it's interesting to see they take something different with what usually is just you know dance dance drop the beat songs mm-hmm. and the this so. song had like a i guess you could say latino feel to it how I saw it or kind of like a, like a Spanish type of feel it had that. I don't know how to describe it. The feel that it had to it was something that you don't hear too often. And it really surprised me when I heard it. I really, really want to hear the Japanese version now. I'm very curious to see that. And I really hope Avix puts it on their YouTube since uh, they're under Avix's sub label. But I, I, I want to see I want to see what they did because the Korean version featured a an artist in it that I wasn't sh- I wasn't sure who it was. I'm curious if the Japanese version did something similar or did they or you know what they did with it. So no, they they introduced that same okay. artist. I think it's like R- Rick Rake or something. Yeah. Like that. So, but it was an interesting song. I, I felt like that one actually stood out to me for it, looking at the K-pop side of things because I occasionally do listen to K-pop. So, but we'll we'll move on to the next one. Enough about that one. I just wanted to hear your opinion on that. Yeah, and going on up to number two, it is "Gin no Kisei" by Sarau, and they're they're very interesting. So this was used for anime. So that's inc- yeah probably explains why the feel of this song was the way it felt because it was kind of a fairly melodied rock mm-hmm. song nothing too out of the extreme mm-hmm. but kind of toward the ordinary also so to speak it was it was all right i i liked it but it's kind of like how it was with that idol group the jinjo no afria it it did its duty but i'm not gonna remember this within the next two days. Mm-hmm. I, I or just yeah, uh, I feel the same thing. The one thing I thought was cool about the song was if you watch the music video on YouTube, it's actually translated into English. So it, those of you who want to know what they're saying, I like that it while you're listening to it, you have the English translation with it. So I thought that was a cool aspect of it. If you don't understand Japanese, it's something kind of neat to have. Oh yeah, it it was an interesting thing that they did to have the English translations with the song, but like I said, there's, it's, I I can't believe I'm saying this for rock, but it's by the numbers. I I, I don't know what to say about that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I love all kinds of rock, and you know, half of the indie corner people that we do is classified as a rock mm-hmm. band, but you know. They have a little bit more something out of the ordinary compared to what Soraru did for this song. Yeah, this one, it I kind of forgot what it sounded like almost already. I do yeah. remember the video because the video was really interesting, but for the song, it wasn't as memorable to me. And that's what's bad, unfortunately. You know, it it is what it is, though. And it's all a lovely 57 thousand three hundred and eight copies and going on up it is no way man by akb 48 oh boy ladies and gentlemen you might want to strap in because we have things to say about this song Mm -hmm. i did not like this song and nor did i i'm gonna be i'm gonna be plain and simple i did not like this song 
And to be frank, I did not like any of these songs that came out by AKB within the last year. 2018, in all intents and purposes, AKB has been dead to me. Their sales numbers are impeccable. I can't fault them for that. And it's because they have these their fans. And I was one of the fans. So I understand what it's like to be a fan for these groups. However, this song and all their songs for this year. I I don't I don't know. I just I just don't know. I I I can't place it into words. It's just they don't know what they want to be. And I agree with that because this song was, so I tried, I listened, I watched the video when it first came out and I listened to it. I didn't care for it then. And it was just all over the place. Like you said, it didn't know what it wanted to be. And so I decided today, I'm like, I'm going to give it another shot. Cause Gray said, you know, Gray talked about it a little, uh, when I talked to him a couple days ago. And so I'm like, I'll give it another shot. I still do not care for it. I turned it off about a little over halfway through because I couldn't do it. I just couldn't finish it. And that's just my personal opinion. It it just didn't know what it wanted to be. It threw it off. The music video is all over the place. I, I, I couldn't do it. It doesn't know if it wants to be a dance song. It doesn't know if it wants to be a pop song. It's all over the place. And that's what loses it. And, you know, with... Nogizaka or Kiyakizaka. If they stick with a certain style of a genre for the song, they most likely stick to it. You look at Ambivalence, it's a mostly dance song, so they stick to the mm-hmm. dance. They don't mix pop all too much with that song. Same for Nogizaka. When they did um, the Kaidi Michi song, that was a more pop song. They did not integrate any dance or any two different genres for these songs. But by God, I don't know what Akimoto's doing with AKB now. Th- their sister songs are great. I prefer NMB over this song. Th- the last NMB song, the one with Yamamoto Sayaka, mm-hmm. her graduation song, was so good. It's much better than this I song. I agree. Much, much better. And I, 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 I don't know what... Akimoto wants to do with AKB. And I understand AKB is on such a high pillar that if they fall, their entire industry falls because of what the 48 industry means to Akimoto. Mm -hmm. If they fall, all the sister groups are probably going to fall in the process. Nogizaka and Kiyakizaka might live through it, but if AKB falls, for all intents and purposes, the idol community might collapse, so to speak. I just don't know. Old AKB was so much better. You look at right around the time where Maida Atsuko graduated. Their songs were always just one beat. Nothing trying to progress. And, you know, the evolution stuff that I talk about with idol music too. That's fine. But you have to stick with what you're evolving with. Not this hot pot back and forth of what two genres you want to do today. And... Jamba Jaw was like that Sentimental Train was like mm-hmm. that where it didn't know what it wanted to be Jamba Jaw specifically was kind of fairly similar to No Way Man in that regard where it didn't know where it wanted to be a, a pop song or a dance song Teacher Teacher was a more electronic song more dancey song so I, I that it was alright but I just personally didn't like that song but I, just, I, don't, I don't know in all intents and purposes I'm, I'm not I'm probably not going to buy anything from AKB for a while. It it lost me. I'm With this podcast, I, this is another thing I forgot to mention on our one year. It With AKB particularly, I had to go out and go buy it because sometimes finding the song fully or just listening through it through the music video isn't really an option. I'd rather just listen to the song over and over compared to the music mm-hmm. video. So it made me buy the song. And it's I haven't bought AKB in a long time because I knew they were hitting this way. Where it, they just did not know what they want to mm-hmm. be anymore. I don't know. I'm just unless the song is just so amazing through the music video. I'm I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. I, you're gonna hear it first. I'm not gonna do this next year. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, and, and see, some things like if it's an artist I absolutely love, yeah, I'll buy it and give it a shot as long as they keep releasing steady. But like AKB, I I'll watch the video before I buy it just because it's. I already know they're not quite my thing i guess you could say so yeah <sighs> i'm 
I mean, I know Gray might like this song because he's been turning into the idol guy now. But I, I don't know if if he was to listen to their older songs and I'll, like the stuffs that made them great. I think he'd be singing a different tune. Mm-hmm. I will say I do like. Uh- I like some of their older stuff because I have one of their older albums, actually. I bought it at Hot Topic, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I bought it at Hot Topic. They did release it in the U.S. and Hot Topic used to carry a ton of Japanese CDs. I bought a couple from there. And AKB was one of them. And it was a good album. I really liked it. It was Kaze, Kazeyomi? Kaze... I don't remember which album it was now. I just remember it had all the girls in the cover. It had the song River, River, River in it. River? Yes, River. Oh, River is an amazing yes, song. Exactly. Yeah, that's one I of their, remember that, that song because it was so good, but that's the, the album I bought. And it was a great album. I yeah. listened to that on repeat for a while. And then I, I finally, you know, this year I actually start listening to them because I think after that album I tried and I just couldn't. I don't know what happened with that. Um, but recently, you know, we started to dive into a lot more artists who are at the peak of their popularity in Japan or whatever, you know, what's an Oricon. So listening to them now, I just, I haven't found a song I really, really liked by them at all. But Kea Kizaka and No Kizaka, I found a lot of songs I really, really liked. And Emma NMB, uh, Yamamoto Saika's graduate, that song was amazing. So it's kind of hard to really, really care or want to buy akb stuff if all these other groups are releasing amazing amazing stuff i actually bought some of the keikizaka and nogizaka stuff i ended up buying some of those singles later on i didn't do that with akb <laughs> so and, and for nogizaka and keikizaka i guess that kind of makes sense because they were made for the intention of specifically rivaling akb but it's getting to the point that with nogizaka especially not only are they rivaling them, it's it's not even a contest mm. no more. And unfortunately, AKB is becoming Morning Musume style, where it doesn't know where it wants mm. to be. It's it's sad. It's it's really sad because, for me personally, because they were such a good group. How they wrote their songs, and I guess just all the expansion, all of it, just kind of got to. A mix match of what they want to do, what they couldn't decide what they want to do, and that's that's that just disappoints me so much as a fan. But yeah, you know, it it sold amazingly though. Regardless of my our little rant here, it sold it sold a lovely one point two five million copies. So it it sold amazingly. Oh, it did. It I mean, yeah, it killed it pretty much. You know, this is their 54th single, and, you know, I bowed out right around 30 or so, 30 or so, yeah, give or take, yeah, yeah, about 30, around there, right around the time where Oshima Yuko GG'd, probably the only song that I've liked was Fortune Cookie, and Koino Fortune Cookie, and that was when we were in Japan, and that was a while ago now. Yep, there's there's nothing more I can say. Let's um, you know what? Let's let's kind of detox ourselves and go to the albums real fast. So yeah, with the albums, let's see here. We got both Nishino Kana again. They she quite dropped quite a bit, but I'm happy to see her on the album side. And she still did decent for you know fourteen thousand thirteen co- fourteen thousand on one thirteen thousand mm, on the 30, other. Th- so that's not like thirty thousand pretty much closely. So you know that's that's not. Too bad to shake. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and for the second week, that's not bad at and all. And of course, you got Bohemian Rhapsody again. It's it's probably going to be the this this year's greatest showman now. At the end, catching up, mm-hmm. and it looks like Yama P took took number one here. I haven't seen him in a long time. I haven't either. I was super surprised to see him on there. I saw that kanji. I'm like, is that who I think it is? So glad to see he came back, and hey, he did really good, and he took the top. Yeah, he he did. It's Yamapi is a very interesting thing too, because he was he was a John, he was a Johnny's person, and then he went on his own, and it's interesting to see his progression out of of his style too. Mm-hmm. 
And those of you who don't know who Yama P is, it's uh, Yamash. Y- Yamash. Oh my God, I'm gonna. <laughs> I cannot talk today. Jesus, <laughs> I cannot talk today. Yamashita yes. Tomohisa, correct? Or Yamashita? Yamashita. Just, is it Yamashita? Yeah. Yamashita uh, Tomohisa. And he used to be part of what was it? Was it news or was it cartoon? I'm always get confused of what he was with. It was news, I believe. Yeah, it was news. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's good to see him continue on with music. He's been more of an actor now, so that's mostly his thing. He's done several albums, but it looks like he hadn't done an album since, uh, well, technically a compilation album in 2016, but before that he didn't have a studio album since 2014. So it's good to see him come back. Yeah, so it seems like, yeah, because he's, he, his, uh, his movie Code Blue, which is amazing, by the way, you should go watch that if you are able to find that. Code Blue is an amazing TV show. It has my my love, Toda Erica in it, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Ooh, I love her. She was in so, Tension. Yeah, uh, it's it's really good. It's really good. You sh- if you guys have the chance to go watch it, go and watch it. But yeah, you know, Yama P is a very interesting actor, so uh, it's good to see him back where he belongs singing but yeah with that i'm gonna just wrap up here and did we have anything else that we want to talk about real fast any housekeeping um housekeeping you can follow us on instagram and twitter at ongaku to you you can also follow us on facebook there as well i i have been posting a little bit more on facebook trying to prepare for a special treat episode we're still working on so I got some little snippets of what we'll be talking about when that episode goes up. So check that out as well. Our Instagram page, I've al- oh, I've also been adding a few special touches on there. We're going to have another future special episode that has not been announced yet. So keep an eye on our Instagram because you might see some things related to that episode. To get you a little hyped. It's not mentioned on there, but kind of hinting at some things. So, <laughs> yeah, there there are at least I want to say we got three special episodes kind of in the works. One is the IU episode which we talked about earlier. Well, oh, then yeah, we, we did talked mention about it last that. week. I I couldn't remember if we mentioned it. So that's what our Instagram is full of, so it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so our IU episode, then we also have our best of 2018 episode. We do have one more episode with me and you that are kind of a secret. Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of a secret. I cannot wait for that episode. I'm already getting pumped. It would be very interesting to talk about that. And then we have another secret episode between me and our good friend, Kyo, from Potosaurus. It's a combination between ours and his podcast. So please look out, be on the lookout for that. If you guys listen to Potosaurus, you guys will know exactly probably what it is we did it we didn't say what it is but if you kind of just guess what the two topics of these our show and his show is then you kind of might understand what it is already and if not look forward to it just look forward to it and from people from Potosaurus, once again hello i am ken from ongaku to you and thank you for listening i want to thank you guys very very much for listening it's amazing and i kind of didn't really get to talk all too much with the one year episode but you know i'm very thankful for the both you and gray what we do for this amazing podcast and it gives me something to talk about besides just me yelling at a wall about how akb just isn't good anymore (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> as, as much as I, I seem like a crazy person it, it gives me a chance to vent on air <laughs> so I'm thankful for you you two as well yes. and we're also thankful to all our fans who've stuck with us and have been listening so I don't know if we get to thank you enough on the next episode but just thank you again you guys have stuck with us since the beginning we also got a lot of new listeners too hopefully you know old and new thank you keep sticking with us we got a lot more treats in store for you and keep a look on our website. We we're gonna try to get some more more articles up when we get hopefully get some free time. We'll see. December's always a busy month. 
Yeah. So. And if not, look forward to Indie Corner. It's one of our biggest things that I put a lot of work into. Both me and you put a lot of work into this. And it's something that is very, very important to me. Just to for our namesake, because we want to introduce a lot of music to you guys. Something that you guys have never heard before. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I want to thank you guys so very much to listening to Ongakudu. I'm your host, Ken. Signing off saying thank you very much and have a great day. Mahalos. This is Luna from Ongaku to you signing off. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Jamatane.